Hi everyone. Welcome to today's textile talk. This is Quilts of Southwest China presented by the Modern Quilt Guild. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Brenna. I'm the communications manager of the MQG and today I'm joined by Marsha McDowell and Li Jun Zhang. Before we start, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you have any technical difficulties with your Zoom, during the presentation, please send us a note in the Q&A box and we will chat with you to find a solution. It is always a, a good idea if you're having issues to go ahead and close out of the Zoom and then rejoin. That solves a multitude of problems. Um, and this webinar is being recorded. You'll see the red recording button in the top left screen of your screen and this will be available on the MQG resource page in addition to on Sakwa's website. Um, we will, we think we will have a time for a short Q&A session at the end. Um, it'll probably just be a few questions. So if you do have any questions, then please put them in the Q&A box so we can get them. We also ask you to respectfully to, we respectfully ask you to be courteous as you engage with the speakers, moderators, and participants. Um, as I said, please utilize the Q&A box for questions. The chat box is wonderful for greeting others and for survey, survey, for commentary or other ways we can improve. And if you prefer not to see any notifications from chat, you can click on the chat button to toggle the, the notifications on or off. Um, we also have live captionings. So you can also view live captioning on this, which is really excited. Um, let's see, so for you, oh, if you prefer to not have the live captionings, you can also turn those off, so your choice. For those of you who are new to Textile Talks, welcome. We are so happy to have you here. This is a series of three weekly presentations and panel discussions from fiber art organizations, including the International Quilt Museum, Quilt Alliance, San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles, Studio Art Quilt Associates, Surface Design Association, and us at the Modern Quilt Guild. And you've already seen our sponsors. We could not continue textile, spot, textile talks without our wonderful sponsors, so we thank them very much. And now let's get into the fun part of the day. Um, I would love to introduce you to Marsha and Li Jun. So first up, Marsha McDowell, is a PhD. She is a professor and curator of folk arts and quilt studies at Michigan State University Museum. She is the director of the Quilt Index and she has authored numerous publications on quilt history. So welcome, Marcia. And Li Jun Zhang is also a PhD and she is an assistant professor of folklore, folklore sorry, um, at George Mason University. Her research focuses on material culture, heritage, and tourism in Southwest and Southeast China. So with that, I will go ahead and go away and pop back up with questions at the end, and I will hand things over to Li Jun. So take it away. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Brenna. And also, um, thank you for inviting us to do this presentation. Um, it's we're really excited um, to be here to share what we know about quilts um, from Southwest China. I'm going to share my screen um, to show the slides. Okay. Let me know that you can see the slides. Masha? Yes, yes. Okay. Just All right. Okay. okay, so in Southwest China, textile artists associated with variety, a variety of tech, ethnic nationalities piece and applique fabric together to form artistic and functional work, including those intended as bed coverings. This presentation will draw on documentation on historical and contemporary work that was included in the 2016 exhibition and accompanying publication, Quilt of Southwest China. The project was funded by a grant from the Luce Foundation 
um, conducted under the auspices of the American Folklore Society and the China Folklore Society, spearheaded by the Yunnan Nationalities Museum and the Michigan State University Museum. Um, other partners in the project include the Anthropology Museum of Guangxi and Guizhou Nationality Museum, Museum of International Folk Art, Masses Museum of World Cultures, and uh, International Quilt Museum. So each of these institutions now has examples of bed covers from Southwest China and the sampling can be seen in the quilt index. So before we introduce quilts in Southwest China, we would like to briefly provide some background information about Southwest China and China in general. China is a vast nation with diverse culture and uh, extraordinarily deep history, while measured not in hundreds, but in thousands of years. In general, Southwest China refers to the border regions in the Southwest of China, including Guizhou province, Yunnan province, Sichuan province, Chongqing. Um, municipality is a big city in Southwest China. And the, Tibet Autonomous Region. So in the more recent context of the Chinese government's development strategies for Western China, the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region has also come to be regarded as part of the Southwest China region. So it includes like a, a very big area um, in Southwest China. Uh, Culturally, and this is also the focus um, in our presentation, Southwest China can refer to the uh, provinces of Yunnan, Guizhou, Guangxi, and Hainan, where ethnic minority culture is very diverse. And at the same time, these diverse peoples are network networked with one another and where they share much in common. We conducted ethnographic research uh, with our colleagues from the United States and China uh, in the provinces of Yunnan, Guizhou, and Guangxi. Um, so uh, the majority of the quilts displayed in the Quilts of Southwest China exhibition, also the quilts we are going to talk, to talk about today, were collected from these regions. Mm -hmm. The areas we are talking about in Southwest China are very diverse in terms of culture, ethnicity, economy, and ge geographical features. Domestically and internationally, as the most ethnically diverse region in China, the Southwest is, one, is often regarded as a quote unquote exotic area with rich ethnic cultures and unique geographical features. While we are speaking of quilting tradition and practice, our focus is on the rural mountainous areas where minority, minority nationalities are prominent. Southwest China is also home to huge cities and lowland areas. And in the case of Guangxi, the um, sea coasts. So it is also home to many people of China's majority Han nationality. So economically, this region is less de developed when compared to the more prosperous Eastern and Northern China. Most of the ethnic minority communities in the Southwest live in areas dominated by small scale agriculture. However, like other parts of China, the region is also experiencing massive social, demographic and economic changes. Upland Southwest China is often beautiful, 
So this beauty is one factor motivating extensive tourism in the region and bring people from China and from other parts of the world. Its cultural diversity is another factor prompting tourists to travel there. All of these have profound impacts on the textile practice in the area, including the making of quilts. Agriculture and agricultural lifestyles still dominate most parts of the mountainous regions of the Southwest China. In some places, the household not only self-sufficient in terms of food, but also produce much of their clothing and other textiles. Many people also do handcrafts, including making textile items such as quilts during the winter when they are not occupied with farming work. Across the region, there is a market day in the local town center every three to five days. And People from the surrounding areas buy practical utensils and also they sell their farm products and handcrafts. And textile related items are commonly seen at this kind of markets. It is um, hard to find an equivalent Chinese word for the term quilt within its meaning in the United States. Items made of small pieces of fabric pieced and applied together are referred to as pingbu in Chinese. It does not necessarily indicate items used on the bed like the English term quilt. Pimbu could be clothes or decorative textiles hanging on the wall. As for the majority of displayed items in the exhibition, the quilted bed covers are also different from traditional American quilts. They are single layer comforter cover uh, with blocks of pieced patchwork and applique on the top layer mostly for design and decorative purposes. Traditionally, patchwork is also referred to as na or by na. So na in Chinese means patchwork and by means plentifulness. So by na means like a lot of patchwork putting together. So um, on the slide, this e skirt and the dragon wife's robe in the collection of Michigan State University Museum shows how patchwork is incorporated into traditional clothing among the Yi ethnic group in Yunnan province. So Marsha, I'll yeah. switch to you. Next slide. Okay. Um, in China, the, the techniques of piecing, patching, and appliquing fabrics together and then binding layers of fabric together with stitches, the fundamental elements associated with the textiles most of us refer to as quilts, have been known to exist for centuries in different locales and cu cultures. There were re records of, the, of patchwork in the Zhao period, which was 1046 to 10 or to 771 BC. That's a long time ago. And, and so the archaeological uh, evidence of patchwork found in China dates back as far as 770 BC. Buddhism was introduced to China in the Donghan dynasty, uh, 25 to 220 AD. And the application of patchwork in making clothing has close ties to the transmission and popularity of Buddhism in Chinese history. Buddhist monks have worn clothes made out of many small pieces of cloth sewn together to evoke their humbleness. Some Chinese monks are referred to as Naji, Naji or self-referenced as Tao Na. 
And here's a marvelous image of a monk in a um, pieced jacket. Next. Oops, go ahead. Before, I just want to say in some parts of China, bed covers or items of clothing are made for a new child out of pieces of fabric contributed by friends and family, figuratively representing the notion that it takes a village to raise the child. These textiles are sometimes called, um, oh, I, I, Li Jun, I need your help saying the word, Bai Jie Bei. Um, or 100 families, bed covers. Um, am I pronouncing it correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Or um, Baya, Baya yeah, Yi. Um, yeah, or exactly. 100 families clothes. Um, and I just will insert here that uh, this tradition of uh, 100 um good wishes. Uh, quilts is something that uh, Dr. Marin Hansen at uh, the International Quilt Museum has ex extensively studied as a phenomena amongst um, families who have adopt adopted um, Chinese families in the US. Um, pieced and applique textiles often decorated with auspicious symbols and constructed of cloth, much like traditional paper cutting, are hung in doorways for privacy and protection from natural and spiritual forces. Now, could you go to the next one? Next. Next. Yeah, thanks. Every ethnic group in China has distinctive traditions practiced both every day and on special occasions. These traditions, often learned informally within a group, connect group members to each other and to their peers. Although quilting is practiced across China, it is among uh, the ethnic minority groups of Southwest China that the quilting tradition has been the strongest. The large number of ethnic communities there in the areas that um, Li Jun has described include those of Zhuang, Buyi, Mao, Yao, and Dong nationalities and often different nationalities live in close proximity to each other. For the same reasons, many textile traditions are still actively practiced in daily life in these communities. While commercially manufactured, Western style textiles are beginning to become more common, uh, commonly used for everyday wear and domestic use. And, but ethnic community members still consider their clothing a public marker of cultural identity and still make and use traditional clothing. For these communities, clothing and adornment is one of the primary ways in which identity has been tr traditionally expressed and distinguishes one ethnic group from another. And even among the same ethnic groups, members of one village from another. Ethnic groups in this region make applique, pieced, and patchwork textiles for clothing and household items, such as cloth carriers for babies, doorway coverings, and bedclothes. Some are decorative, and yet some are functional. Next. In order to produce a quilt, skills and knowledge of many different textile techniques are needed, including how to spin yarn and thread from homegrown cotton, weave the yarn and thread into cloth, and then to dye the cloth with natural pigments, such as indigo. The weaving requires the crafting of making looms, and the dyeing requires the technique of producing pigments. Embellishment of cloth with applique and embroidery, um, embroidery requires paper cutting patterns that quilt artists either make themselves or buy from paper cutting um, pattern specialists. Tracing and studying the processes of the production of a quilt will help us understand the ecosystem of knowledge and skills in a society and to better understand the vulnerabilities and challenges for sustainability of one art or a cluster of arts. Next one. So textile artists in these regions usually make 
um, a center panel by sewing together individually constructed uh, squares with bound edges. Um, the artists typically use a repeated applique pattern on the squares, but some applique unique images of stylized birds, butterflies, fish, and other lively creatures. And Lejeune will be going over some of those design motifs in a moment. But to the center panel, artists added a border or edge of handwoven fabric often dyed in indigo. A plain back cover of a similar handwoven fabric is added. The, te the techniques um, of taibu, uh, taiwa, and embroidery are often applied or applied to make decorative patterns on the quilts. And I think we need the next slide. Yes. Um, taibu means quilting pieces of rectangular cloth or silk on a large piece of cloth to form colorful patterns. Taihua is also called applique, meaning sewing, sewing um, small pieces of cloth of different colors together to make a complete pattern. It is a common method used by textile artists of many ethnic groups in China. Although most of the ethnic groups like to use the rich, bright colors, each group has their own way of matching their favorite colors. It becomes a, a, a marker then of, of um, identity and differences. Embroidery techniques used by artists also vary according to the, their ethnic group. The embroidery techniques include plain embroidery, cross-stitch embroidery, broken thread, thread embroidery, knot embroidery, back lock stitch, and horsetail embroidery, actually using um, the hair of the tail of a horse um, upon which um, additional stitching is done. Sometimes several kinds of embroidery techniques are combined to make a more three-dimensional pattern. The individual pieces of cloth might also be sewn together using what we in the US refer to as the pot holder technique. And I've got a slide, the next one. Um, a group of uh, Guangxi museum staff are doing repairs on some of their quilts in their collection. And you can see the backside of one of the quilts being worked on by the woman in the foreground. While patched and embroidered um, textiles are still made by individuals for their own traditional clothing, baby carriers, and other household items, um, they're also being increasingly being sold to others. So let's see the next slide. Um, and yeah, so here's an example of um, artists who have made uh, an art, yeah, uh, quilts and, and baby carriers for their own use. And then the next slide. Um, at entrances to places like the Great Wall, the, the, the mega tourist places in China, like the Great Wall or the um, clay soldiers at Xi'an, it is not uncommon to find vendors with booths full of brightly colored whole quilts, vests, pot holders, table mats, and other items that people tourists purchased as mementos to bring back home. Okay, the next one. And some entrepreneurs are also finding new ways to generate income using traditional skills and text and designs associated with very specific ethnic groups and very specific locales. Um, uh, Zhu Jian um, Tan, a Zhuang, Bai, a Zhuang textile artist specializing in horsehair embroidery. Um, whoops, go back to the previous one. Yeah, uh, she's here in the, the red coat. Um, she also coordinates a project in which Bai Ku Yao women produce panels, the same panels they sew for their traditional shirts. They then patch in together into an overall quilt top, which she then sells in her store. It's, it's in a, they're sold to, to her tourists 
and are an important source of income generation for this rural bike group by by Ku Yao group. Okay, the next one. And then um, just uh, we want to make sure we mention the fact that uh, quilt making in general is greatly rising in China as the middle class um, uh, <laughs> grows exponentially. And so now there are major expositions and trade fairs that provide new opportunities to purchase fabric and sewing equipment uh, for people to take workshops to learn particular sewing techniques and ethnic um, specific techniques um, and to see displays of textiles, including of traditional forms by the ethnic minority groups. So again, there's that cross mingling of, of cultures. And then the next slide, and I'm turning it back to Li Jun. So artists um, in Southwest China use various patterns on quilt, quilted items. Many are colorful. So there, the commonly seen patterns include geometric motif, botanical motif, animal motif, mythological and legendary motif, and motif related to religion and folk belief. Um, Many motifs carry a range of cultural meanings and convey what people would like to express through these images uh, on the textile. So most of the blocks on the, this quilt, Huang Guangxi, are made of four smaller ones in a pattern called 12 triangle by Western quilters, as Masha just uh, briefly introduced. And this back cover was, was made by Hui. Hui is like a Muslim minority group in China. Um, by Hui textile artist Shasha um, from Yunnan province. It is ma made of 52 pieces of brocade uh, in different traditional and innovative patterns including the diamond and other geometric figures of the Dai people in Yunnan province. So the Dai group has um, a lot of similar customs with the, like, the Thailand uh, ethnic groups um, because it's on the border between Yunnan and uh, Southeast China, uh, Southeast Asia, sorry. And many of the embroidered or applied designs on the quilts from Southwest China are botanical motifs, including leaves, plants, fruits, and flowers. Flower designs include peony, sunflower, chrysanthemum, lotus, camellia, and plum flowers. This back cover was made by Zhuang artist Mo Ai and sunflowers are embroidered on 18 of the blocks and uh, embroidered uh, on the other two blocks are a cock and the butterfly on flower designs. The designs symbolize uh, the beauty and hope in life. This Back cover features blocks with various botanical patterns, such as pomegranates, peonies, and lotus. So we have the pomegranate here and the lotus and the peonies flower. The pomegranate, with, which appear in the second column from the left um, in the second and third rows, connotates abundance due to the fruits, plentiful seeds. So it, it represents people's desire for um, fertility or desire for a large family. Um, animal designs it, are also very common on quilts made in Southwest China. This back cover includes depictions of turtles, 
cats, rabbits, and various fish and birds, insects, butterflies, and the turtle are associated with um, longevity, so people's wish for a long life. Other animal designs include the 12 Chinese zodiac animals, the livestock, lion and tiger, and et cetera. So th these pictures on the slide show paper cut embroidery patterns of horse, goat, rabbit, mandarin duck, pig, a tiger, and rooster, and some other animals. And this was made by the Dong textile artist Qing Nai Shijing and in the Sanjiang County, Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. Some designs are related to folk narratives, such as mythology, legend, and folktale. This textile has images of dragon and butterflies and some other animals. So in the origin myth of the Miao people, dragon hatch from the butterfly eggs. So butterfly is regarded as the ancestor of the Miao people. And other mythological and legend legendary motif includes the um, phoenix and killing. Killing is like, um, it's not a real animal, it's a legendary or mythological animal that looks like a lion. Um, and other mystical figures. Some of the motifs are related to religion and folk belief. So the corners of each block uh, on this bed cover show the design called Rui uh, in Chinese. So Rui is a ceremonial object in Chinese Buddhism and sometimes also in the Taoism um, practice. The design represents good fortune or have one's wishes granted. And the Rui image is a motif that is frequently seen on quilts in Southwest China. It's not only on quilts in Southwest China, it's a really common motif for textile items across China. Some religious imagery utilizes flowers and plants. So the majority motifs of the quilt cover um, on the slide is botanical. Some of them have religious connotations, such as the lotus and the fingered citron. So the lotus on the top of the far right column is a Buddhist symbol for purity and integrity. The fingered citron uh, in the second from the left here um, to rose up from the bottom is often used as offerings at temples in China. So this categorization is not an all encompassing index of quilt motifs. It just demonstrates the variety of uh, imageries quilt artists in Southwest China are in favor of and the, the motifs we often see on the, uh, often see uh, on the quilts from this region. And there are many other motifs that do not fall in these categories. Some are specifically associated with certain ethnic group or, or with certain ethnic culture, such as like the dark tea, the flower building and the silk ball um, that we see on the triangle shaped blocks of the quilt by the Zhuang artist Huang Biyu. So Zhuang people in Guangxi, they believe that the dark teeth can ward off the evil spirit. So they sometimes put dark teeth or, or dark hair under the pillow of their children to pr protect their children. So, um, and then that was incorporated in this, the, the design of this quilt. And also the design of the flower building is 
associated with the strong uh, vernacular architecture that was built on the, the steel um, because of the um, moisture uh, in the region. And the silk ball is also a symbol of the Zhuang ethnic group. Um, it usually symbolizes uh, love and uh, all the re relationship between boys and girls. And Chinese character is a design used by people across different ethnic groups. Um, in addition to the longevity, the character of longevity showed uh, on the slide, other characters with auspicious meanings, such as like um, happiness, fu, and uh, also the uh, or, or luck, the fu, and the happiness, the um, xi, um, are also commonly used in design of um, quilts from Southwest China or, or from quilts in other parts of China, especially the character of happiness, xi. It's um, often used for quilts made as wedding gifts. Uh, uh, it's also a common decoration for wedding ceremonies. So we're going to introduce one of uh, the featured artists uh, from the exhibition, Huan Bi Yu, and show a short video to illustrate the contemporary quilting practice by text, textile artists in Southwest China. Huang was born uh, in a rural Zhuang community, or we call in China, we call village, um, in the Western Guangxi. Um, she learned textile skills from the, her mother, her grandmother, and the other elders from her community. And then later on, she went to um, study in a college in the big capital city in Guangxi, Nanning. And then she was hired by a tour agency and she got married and, and two years uh, after she was hired by the tour company. And then one year after her marriage, she quitted her job and become a sort of full-time um textile artist um so she continued to learn the um many textile skills from her mother and her grandmother and her community members so including the skills of weaving dyeing embroidery and quilt making um so wait i'm going to show a short video um about her that we made for the exhibition. Lazi 他们那个手工做的还是买的手工做的现在没有这种简单了是在龙陵那边吗对对是那种老人留下来的老人家留下来的就是老人留下来是你妈妈还是谁留下来外婆外婆你外婆留下来的哇嗯都有住都有住啊
，还有一个，还有一个是白的嘛，白的，嗯。以前自己种的棉花，自己拿一支布那个工序要十几道工序，人家也是。就没有顶针的话，手都烂了嘛。嗯。蝴蝶话就是福的意思了。那个不是。原来它有一种是那种羊皮的那个彩。还没还没还上的时候就应该设就就应该在设计怎么做了。你有没有？你这个主要是有没有想过是给宝宝做用的？原来我是想，是想给宝宝用的嘛啊！哦、<笑>原来是想啊。绣完，基本上都绣完了。有时候真的一天不绣手都痒，因为有时候你然后就把那四块把它拼起来，也是也是让它缝起来就拼成一块。传统没有。这个是你自己想的啊、哦。对对。嗯，这样。哎呦，怎么都有差不多两个月了。所以要不，不然。嗯、就是必须要这样子，这样子。所以我说盯这个小布。就这样，然后就把它裁上去了。是一个一个这样子放上来以后呢，就这样子缝缝缝过来的。嗯。就这样子。So that video sh shows a little bit of the process of Fondi making the, one of the quilts that was included in the Quilt of Southwest uh, exhibition. It was originally intended uh, for her son when she was pregnant. <laughs> um, so she, um, she continued to practice quilt making and brought her, bring her textile skills from the small Zhuang village uh, in Longling in Western Guangxi to the big cities and later on to this exhibition to on the international stage. She further brings quilting artists, um, uh, the, the, the quilting arts to different places through frequent demonstrations um, and teaching at different museums. She has also opened a textile workshop where she not only makes quilted bed covers, but also produces cushions and table runners, bags, and other smaller items with, with the techniques of piecing, patching, and applying fabrics. So a combination of love 
for her ethnic culture and concern for its future in this modernizing <laughs> social situation that motivates her to make handmade textile and promote those traditional arts among the younger generation and promote it to people outside of her ethnic community. And uh, she is now recognized uh, by the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region Government as a master artist. Um, Marsha, shall I hand it over to you for the Pew Index? Marsha, you need to unmute. Yeah, maybe Brenna, could you let us know how much time we have left? Certainly, we have about 13 minutes left. Okay, I'll do a little speed demonstration so we can have some time for um, questions. So um, let me share my screen now. Let me stop the screen. There, I've got it. Okay. I think so. Um, you should all be able to see the, the quilt index again. I try to, um, at the end of presentations that I'm involved with, is show you all a way that you can use the quilt index to um, look at more examples of the topic, in this case, quilts of Southwest China. And it also gives you a brief intro to using the quilt index in general. So, um, See, I need to get, uh, yeah, shoot. Sorry, what, I got to get out of the, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, there. There. So, um, yeah, one of the outcomes of this project that, that Li Jun and I and others in both the US and um, China have realized is that um, we have, as Li Jun said, developed some small important collections of these kinds of textiles in, in the US, particularly at our museum and at the International Quilt Museum. Um, but we've also added data to the quilt index. So the way you find it is go to quiltindex.org and then if you go to, um, let's say collections, shoot, right there. And it's looking for it. And you can see right here a box that you can click on. And you can read a little bit more about our project and our partners there. And then if you scroll down, you can actually do a couple of things. First of all, if you click right on this, it will bring you to the quilts that are in the collection of the Yunnan Nationalities Museum in China. Eventually, our goal is that we will be adding more from their collection, as well as from some of the other China museums that we've worked with. Um, but here, I'm going to click and in a moment, take you right to seeing all of the, the um, quilts that are in the Michigan State University Museum collection. We'll also be adding ones from the International Quilt Museum. But before I click on there, I want to show you right here is the Quilt Index has papers that were published um, by Uncoverings, the quilt journal. And this is one by Maren Hansen uh, that does address her studies on um, the uh, 100 Good Wishes quilts. So you can check it out right there. But I'm going back to click on this and um, you can see all of these uh, images. You can load more by going down here and clicking more. And then I will point out that 
one of the things that might happen uh, in searches is that you get some odd things over here like this, and it's because those quilts were actually made in China um, because um, they were adaptations of quilts in the US that were made in China. So you'll see that, but we've also included some of the baby coverings because we don't always just have quilts in this um, index. We, we try and have affiliated objects from material culture. And this is one example where by seeing these examples, you can see the connections between the motifs and the designs, techniques that are used in other textiles are also used in the um, quilts. But here's one other thing I wanted to show you is the compare and contrast, a feature I love about the quilt index. So I, I'm going to go here and select that one and that one and that one, because just right now they sort of look similar. And um, so then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit compare and it brings them up. I guess I didn't push hard enough on the, the one, but then once you're here, you can blow these up by um, making them bigger and you can move them around. Um, but then you are able to start saying, oh, look at these. They have the same motif in this in a block. And that ability to compare and contrast is really a wonderful feature of the quilt index. And I then you go back here and it's hard for me to see with this little light in front of my eyes, but I think um, here I can close that and you can choose another set. So anyway, Anyway, it makes it um, a very useful tool. So use the quilt index, um, look at it for, again, to um, find more information about this particular project and quilts that you've seen illustrated today. Again, go to collections, hit this view collection down to the bottom and keep, uh, we'll go see it and then load more and load and load more until no more load. So um, that's the little brief tutorial uh, for using the quilt index for investigating quilts. And um, you, oh, you will see at the end some of those uh, kinds of pieces that are available at tourist uh, um, destinations like Xi'an and the Great Wall. Okay, um, well, with that, I think we'd like to wrap it up and say thank you to everyone who was listening today. And um, we'll let Brenna let us know if there are any questions um, that we might be able to answer. I'm back. Uh, we okay. do have several questions. I think we'll probably only have time for one or two. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question is, um, Francis is asking if the glue from the video that you showed is um, if that glue washes out. Liju, and I'm, I'm looking at you to answer uh -huh. that. <laughs> <laughs> so could you explain the washout? Yeah, so um, I imagine, th does the glue stay stiff or in the washing plot process, does it kind of Oh, right. Uh, disintegrate. Yeah. So traditionally, they they use the um, the paste made of rice powder. Uh, rice powder. Okay. So yeah. Now they um when people move to cities, they start to buy glue from the uh, uh, stores. Um, yeah. I I don't have to, like a really like a insightful research on the about the glue but but we use the glue for for the glue made of rice powder it does wash out <laughs> mm -hmm. it's if at the beginning when you make it it's really helpful for the embroidery process uh -huh. and then when you wash it it become more soft um yeah nice awesome awesome so is there um this is another really wonderful question is there 
let's see, where did it come from? Um, oh, is there, are there any next steps for your Quilts of Southwest China project? Oh, I, I'll start by saying that we're thrilled that this work together has inspired our colleagues in China to do more investigation because, you know, as people are exposed to the availability of Western style clothing, which is a lot cheaper and easier to than producing cloth from cotton all the way in. Yeah. So, so some of the, these textile traditions are rather disappearing. And so one of the urgencies is to do as much documentation of these variations of designs and traditions and from village to village and, um, and to collect examples so that we got them for posterity. And I don't know, Li Jun? Uh, yeah, I will add a little bit about the exhibition itself. So the, as uh, some of us already know, the exhibition toured in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. And then in 2018, my colleagues at the Anthropology Museum of Guangxi and I, we, we reworked that um, that exhibition with some of the borrowed uh, quilts from the three Chinese museums, also um, quilts from the collection um, at the Anthropology Museum of Guangxi. And that collection has been expanding because of this project. So we were able to use the quilts at the collection and they, we reworked it for the Chinese audience. So we brought that exhibition back to China uh, it has been exhibited um, at Enzo Patrick Museum of Guangxi, Yunnan Nationality Museum, uh, Yuling Museum. It's like a local city level museum. So the, uh, my colleagues at the Enzo Patrick Museum of Guangxi plan to have the exhibit, uh, exhibition continue touring within the uh, Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. Um, so for autonomous, a region, it, it just means a province, but because they have a majority, majority Zhuang ethnic minorities, so it's like an a administrative unit that is similar to province, but they have, they have requirements such as like how the, the percentage, a certain percentage of the administrative leader has to be found like that certain designated ethnic minorities. Interesting. Yeah, that, that was one of the questions. So thank you, you know for what? that in your answer. <laughs> and you know what? One of the things I don't think we said um, is like how many um, ethnic minority, the, the population number. And I don't know if Li Jun has any of those figures off the top of your head, but we're, we're talking tens of thousands. Maybe how many would you say? It's it's a lot. So officially, officially designated ethnic groups are 56, including the Han majority. But within each officially designated uh, ethnic groups, there are subgroups. So like Masha said, it could be hundreds and thousands of groups. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And millions of people. Yes. And remind me, have you all done a book about this? Oh, thank you for yeah, asking. You? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, oh, you, uh, oh um, I don't know oh, whether it can show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank, like thank you. It's available through Indiana University Press. Okay. It was actually published by our colleagues in China. And, um, but uh, there it is. There uh, so, yeah. yeah Please call Chris check out Indiana China. University <laughs> Press. Uh -huh. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, I think we have um, run out of time, but I want to thank you both so, so much for putting this presentation together and sharing it with, uh, with all of us. And I want to say thank you to everybody who came to the presentation. Um, if you missed part of it, or if you want to tell a friend about it and encourage them to give it a listen to and a watch, uh, this is recorded. It is going to be on the MQG resource page if you're a Modern Quilt Guild me member, and it is also on the Sakwa website. It's on the Sakwa. Um, Sakwa has a full YouTube playlist of all of the textile talks, which is wonderful, so you can spend hours and hours um, reliving all of these talks. So. Thank you both so much. And we also want to thank our sponsors. So we'll play a brief video 
of our sponsors who sponsor Textile Talks. So thank you everyone for coming today. And I think Lucy will put up a video here momentarily. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you.